Hello everyone, Jonathan here with another What Is This Weapon? I think you can see what this weapon is. If you don't know what this is, well, I'd be disappointed. It's a Luger, or a uh, Parabellum uh, Pistola P P08, uh, to give it its other names. Needless to say, perhaps, we're maybe less interested in this bit than this bit, or at least the significance of the two bits together. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, we don't know a huge amount about these, and I use plural quite deliberately because there are a number of them around. So, obviously, suppressed Luger, and it is vintage. It's not First World War vintage, as, as is the Luger, or pre-First World War, as is the Luger, but it is Second World War. Uh, we know that much. It is not the pistol created to silently assassinate Adolf Hitler, as... Some have claimed, um, apart from anything else, there is more than just the pistol they've got. Uh, we have three more of them. Um, so this, this was something that a small stock of, uh, was created of for clandestine purposes. So we do know from a, a document at the National Archives that silent Lugers were assembled for Special Operations Executive. Yes, it's them again. Those, those sneaky folk from <laughs> the Second World War who had a need for quiet weapons. Uh, think the well rod, um, other things beginning with well, and generally sneaking around behind enemy lines and uh, particularly dropping weapons as well, or inserting, uh, providing weapons to partisans, uh, militias, anyone that was going to cause the Nazis some hassle. And so this is one of that toolbox. But unfortunately, unlike the uh, well rod, the well gun, the sleeve gun, some of the other things that we've um, covered either here or over on the GameSpot channel, we know that's about all we know about this. But let's have a look at it and see what we can, what we can say. So the suppressor is, well, we know, we know where the suppressor comes from. It's a Parker Hale suppressor. So they were involved, as they often were, with customising British military weapons, albeit this time it's a German military weapon that's been appropriated. So all, all of the Lugers, the, these are not captured from German forces, these are all commercial. Uh, now, had the British forces wanted to use Brit German military Lugers, huge supplies of those would have been, um, well not huge, but significant numbers were captured in the first war. They could have been, they could have put out um, a recall notice effectively to get uh, soldiers and officers to hand in Lugers that they had acquired in the First World War. Some would have been captured by, um, I believe the document in the National Archives is dated 43, so the, the scope for, for field captured Second World War uh, Lugers as well. None of that's relevant. All, of, all, of the, all three of these are fitted to commercial Lugers. So when and where these were purchased, I don't quite know, but they would have been in British hands pre the Second World War for obvious reasons. So they are all, they're all commercial, they're all 7.65 calibre, not the 9mm that we know uh, for the P08, sorry, the P08. P08 refers just to the, um, that's, that's the 9mm model that gave us the 9mm Parabellum cartridge. These are, in fact, 7.65 Luger. Uh, one of them has, actually has the grip safety frame, this one does not. Uh, the other two are refinished with a, quite roughly, so they look like they've been they're possibly not in the greatest condition when they were converted, or possibly they were used post-war, and we know even less about that. All very frustrating, I, I, I know, but still worth showing you for, for what it is. Now, the thing dangling off the label here is actually a thread protector because these are uh, detachable suppressors. Now, det detachable suppressors on pistols, not hugely common by the mid 1940s. Um, you know, uh, allegedly the Soviet Union has the Nagant revolver, famously that um, has a gas seal system and therefore, therefore be sit fitted with a suppressor. There is the, high, the American high standard. There's the well rod, but detachable suppressors that. James Bond style, thread on and thread off. Uh, there really aren't many by this point. So a number of years after, well, quite a few years after the, the Maxim patent suppressor, 1909, when that uh, comes out and begins to very slowly uh, proliferate, used on rifles primarily, 
um, as I say, not so much on pistols. This is uh, the Parker Hale pattern. We've got a bead, a copper bead, front sight attached to the suppressor body. And as you can see, we have machined off and then threaded the classic Luger muzzle with its sort of ramp foresight, leaving you, well, no usable front sight at all, actually. So this can only accurately be shot with the suppressor on it. And the standard Luger rear sight is, is unchanged. And I've chosen this one because it's still in its pretty pristine commercial finish, nicely blued, um, nicely finished, more nicely finished than the um, uh, military Luger. As I say, the others have been somewhat through the wars, quite possibly literally, and have been refinished. But they all have the same suppressor. Fairly straightforward design. In here is a steel plate drilled with, with holes for, isn't it, for an initial, it's about here, for an initial expansion chamber. And then we can happily unscrew the end cap here. It's a knurled end cap. and show you the contents of the suppressor. So each of the, the baffles in here is a pressed piece of steel turned into a cup. And then three radial slots are again pressed into that steel. So it's, it's a relatively distinctive looking baffle and there are a number of these in here as you might expect, that's how suppressors work. You're, you're baffling the air <laughs> as it passes through, or the gases, I should say. Now, I think all of ours have been apart and have had the baffles refitted both ways round in different guns. So, to me, what makes most sense is actually with the, the radial slots outermost. In fact, and all of the others have that. But when I un unscrewed this one, the baffles were that way around. So hopefully my uh, suppressor contacts <laughs> will agree with me when I say they were meant to be installed that way around. So I'll just pop all of these out. So first of all, so that we can see how many there are for the baffle stack or they are baffles more than they are washers. There's no wire mesh in here. There's no um, fabric. And the barrel does not protrude into the casing and is not ported, therefore. So it's not integrally suppressed, like something like the high standard or the well rod. And we actually have that plate, which is going to be great fun to get back in later, let me tell you that sits lowermost in the casing. And there's what the gases first come up against uh, as they rush into that first expansion chamber in the suppressor. So that's your baffle stack with a little plate behind it, end cap there, which leaves us with a simple steel tube. And all they've done there to mount the plate effectively is, is press in a rib um, into the drawn tube and the plate sits there. So that's, that's relatively simple. Um, it doesn't, the other thing my brain was reaching for was wipes. <laughs> it doesn't include any rubber wipes. So less efficient by default than something like a well rod uh, where the bullet is, the first bullet through is creating a hole and is super quiet, containing all the gas behind it, reducing the difference in pressure between the inside and the outside, which is what we hear as sound. So not, not subsonic ammunition, um, I mean you could download ammunition um, and be firing subsonic out of this. It almost certainly wouldn't function this iconic toggle action of the Luger. Now that's not necessarily a downside because, uh, well it's a downside in terms of rate of fire, but if you deliberately, if you really don't care and you just want quietness, yes you could fire subsonic ammunition through this. We've yet to come across any evidence of 7.65 subsonic ammunition being used, but then we also know very little about the guns in the first place. And just finally, we've got our little thread protector ring here. 
Now, this is not to convert the gun into a fully functioning non-suppressed Luger per se, because as mentioned, there's no, front, no real usable front sight on this. Um, clearly, you can still shoot it. You can line the center of this lug here up with the rear sight and still shoot it. That's not the purpose of the thread protector. The thread protector is there to protect the threads, because if you were to damage one of these threads and then find yourself ill-prepared for squad of Germans or something. I mean, highly unlikely you'd be taking on a whole squad of Germans with these, but nonetheless. And you're trying to thread this on in a hurry. Uh, well, if this was damaged and you cross-thread it, you're in a world of trouble. So they provided you with a thread protector. Now, bearing in mind we have the well rod, the sleeve gun, the Americans have the high standard that we could you know, get production of as soon as it's available. Um, we also have a, a Webley self-loading pistol with a, adapted to a, to a Parker Hale suppressor, so, and, and we, we have way more stocks of Webley 1913 pistols, so why would, we, why would the Brits be looking at a Luger with a suppressor uh, for any reason? Um, I can see why people have gone straight to it's an assassination weapon to blend in with the Germans. We know from Operation Foxley, which is the actual operation to assassinate Hitler, that they were going to use a Car 98K rifle, carbine, to snipe Hitler with, that was, uh, but also shoot a piet at him, which is like something out of Sniper Elite. But um, nonetheless, that, that's what they were talking about doing. They looked at poisoning and everything. No mention in those documents of using a pistol. People have speculated, I think building on a bit of you know, House of Cards here, that these would have been the sidearms for the guys sent in German uniform to go and snipe Hitler with a Car 98K. So, so there's, we know that's not true, but could SOE have been planning to have a disguised assassination weapon? It's not beyond the realms of possibility. Um, when it's without the suppressor on it, especially if you have the protector on the end there, you wouldn't immediately realise this wasn't just a normal Luger, and if it was in a holster, you wouldn't see it anyway. So... If you wanted a covert assassination gun, one of these, you know, you'd be indistinguishable from a German officer um, or driver or whoever they sent to do the assassination, and then you could have your suppressor hidden about your person, quickly swap it over and go about your assassination mission. That's the, that's the sort of dirty dozen um, sort of James Bond version of things. We've no evidence at all for that. But equally, the other option, that we just wanted a functional reasonably modern self-loading pistol with a suppressor on it doesn't quite stack up either because, again, we had access to Webley self-loaders. I mean, I think we could safely agree that the Webley self-loader is, well, it's arguable, but we had access to loads of them is the point. We don't have access to loads of decent condition Lugers. This, this has to be a, a niche thing. So it's either an SOE preference for the German Luger because it's functional and works well with a suppressor. Don't forget, the weight of a suppressor being dragged back and forth by a recoil mechanism plays havoc with, with, with guns. The 1911 pistol that the commandos and, OSOE, and SOE had access to, famously difficult to suppress, so there's that. Um, on the other hand, they seem to have managed it with the Webley Auto. So, All rather up in the air, so why don't, um, why don't we throw it open to the comments section which of those two theories do you prefer, or can you think of another one? Thanks very much for watching, guys. Um, there are various ways that you can engage with the collection here at the Royal Armouries, this being one of them. Um, you can also head over to the GameSpot YouTube channel for more of me talking about guns. Um, we have our own social media outlets, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, there's our website, of course, our online collection that you can peruse. Uh, most of all, though, we'd very much like you to come and visit us at one of our three sites here in the UK, up here at Leeds. Uh, down at Fort Nelson on the south coast, or indeed at the famous Tower of London, where all of the arms and armour you can see there are ours, which is nice. <laughs> so we'll see you again next time.